Hello everyone, this is Colleen Lemas, Starseed Astrologer and Spiritual Messenger from SacredSoulEmpowerment.com. Here to do your weekly angel card reading for Monday, June 11th through Sunday, June 17th, 2018. For this week's weekly reading, we will be using the Angel Tarot deck by Doreen Virtue and Radley Valentine for the main message for everyone. And your special message card, depending on your stone of choice this week, will be coming from the messages from your angels deck, also by Doreen Virtue. So before we take a look at our stones of choice and get into the energies for the week, I just want to make mention that we're now into the second week of this month of June. And if you haven't already watched the monthly card reading for the month of June, please make sure you go to my YouTube channel under Colleen Lama and watch that monthly angel card reading for the month. Okay, so let's take a look at our stones of choice. Our first stone of choice is this beautiful moonstone. Now moonstone comes in all different kinds of colors. This one happens to be a creamy white color. It's actually almost got a little tinge of orangish color to it. It's a very beautiful soft and gentle stone. The moonstone is good for intuition, increasing your intuition. It's good for inspiration. It's good for success and good fortune in love and in business. And because it's called Moonstone, it obviously vibrates to the moon energy, which helps in stabilizing one's emotions. Your second stone of choice is this beautiful ocean jasper. It looks like the ocean. It's a very kind of um, light blue color, and it's got darker blue splotches in it, as you can see. The ocean jasper is... Um, good for bringing joy into one's life. It helps with expanding your mind, your perceptions. It assists with the idea of peace as well as letting go. It's helpful for strength and renewal and the interconnection with all things. And the ocean jasper particularly has a connection to Atlantis, the Atlantean times. And so it's also got ancient knowledge I should say, has ancient knowledge from that time period. All right, and then your last stone of choice. This is morganite, and this morganite stone is a very light pink colored stone. It almost looks like rose quartz. And the morganite is really good as a universal stone of unconditional love and vibrates to the idea of divine love. It helps to cleanse the heart chakra and old emotional um, challenges or emotional turmoil or traumas from the past. It helps to attract and maintain love, both romantic love as well as, again, that universal love that we have you know, for all people, all of humanity, all things. And it is also embodying the idea of healing and compassion. So again, your stones of choice for the week for your special message card is Moonstone, Ocean Jasper, or Morganite. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about the astrology for this week. We actually have a new moon this week, but before we talk about that, we're going to look at Tuesday the 12th of June because this is the day that Mercury, the planet that rules thoughts and ideas and all forms of communication, moves out of his home sign of Gemini and into the sign of Cancer, which is much more loving and nurturing and it rules home and family. So here we have again these thoughts, ideas, and or communication that's centered around that loving compassionate, nurturing, home and family, or those that in our lives that are considered a part of our family, our spiritual family, it's going to really focus on that. So, you know, in, in terms of thoughts and ideas, we're thinking in a much more divine feminine way, in a much more loving and nurturing way. Um, the ideas, we could be coming up with ideas that deal with home and family issues or, you know, home and family projects. 
And the communication, obviously, I mean, when Mercury was in Gemini, it was much more a fast thinker and a curious thinker and a lot of things in our mind going on at once. But now in this, again, this water sign of cancer, this emotional sign of cancer, it's kind of bringing more of a sense of peace and serenity and love. And again, we're communicating that with other people. We're communicating that with our friends, our loved ones, our family. Even just in the way we communicate on a day-to-day -day basis is going to change. Now, this can even be with coworkers, okay? It doesn't mean that we're telling all of our coworkers that we love them, but we're just, you know, we're being much more loving and nurturing and, and being a good listener and being that shoulder to cry on if somebody needs us, etc. Now, Mercury is going to be in the sign of Cancer for a little while. Um, didn't jot it down, but normally it spends about three weeks in a sign. So you have a little bit of an idea how long that energy will last. Now, on Wednesday the 13th, we have the new moon. The new moon is in Gemini. It's at 22 degrees of Gemini. And of course, new moons are about new beginnings. Now, before I go further in talking about that, I just want to make mention that on Monday and Tuesday, the 11th and the 12th, the beginning of this week's weekly reading, the moon will be in the shadow. The moon will be uh, in the dark of the moon phase, as we like to call it. And that's because as the full moon wanes, which we had the full moon about two weeks ago, as it wanes and it becomes smaller and smaller in size, that means that we're going more into this idea of letting go and releasing and and you know, ending, so to speak, what, what needs to be released and let go in your life. And it doesn't necessarily mean a situation or a circumstance or a relationship. This could be about releasing and letting go of things on an emotional level or things on an energetic level or having to do with the mind. Now, that dark of the moon is going to be in the tail end of Taurus and then in Gemini, because this new moon doesn't happen until 22 degrees of Gemini. So what could that mean as far as the dark of the moon on Monday and Tuesday? We're releasing ideas about how we value ourselves or our sense of self-worthiness, or there might be something going on with money or finances because Taurus rules that. Gemini, there could be something with this dark of the moon phase right before the new moon to where we're releasing things on a mental level, our thoughts, or our belief systems that are no longer valid. Um, and, you know, Gemini has that vacillating effect where we're in a state of indecision, or first we think this way, and then we think that way, and we can't really make, you know, a decision because we keep vacillating. So there could be something, again, that we're letting go of as far as decisions to be made. We're coming to some sort of conclusion about what direction to go or or you know what to learn next or or whatnot now the new moon new beginnings okay and Gemini loves to write you know Gemini is all about all forms of communication writing included so this might be a, a especially good new moon that we can write out a list of what it is that we want to uh, give birth to the seeds that we want to plant in the next two week cycle as the new moon starts to grow and expand called the waxing moon. Now, if you're in Eastern time in the United States, just to give you an idea uh, of when the new moon happens so that if you want to make your list or you want to do some sort of intentions, you know, verbally or visualizing these intentions of what it is you want to give birth to, the new moon happens at 3.43 p.m. on Wednesday. Now, 3.43 p.m., that's Eastern time. So if you're in a different time zone, you'll have to figure out when that is for you. Those people that are, um, you know, in Europe, you know, in the U.K., um, we're looking at uh, really late at night going on midnight, you know, depending on where you're at. Those people that are in Australia, New Zealand, you know, we're looking at Thursday for you, for you guys. Um, those of us in the United States, Canada, Mexico, Brazil, you know, it will definitely be on, on Wednesday the 13th. And again, just for your time zone. So plant these new seeds first in your mind, because Gemini, again, is the sign of the mind. So we want to write them out, talk them out, uh, and visualize this new birth energy. Also on the same day, Wednesday the 13th, Venus which is the planet of love and relationships as well as finances and money. She's moving out of Cancer, 
which is where Mercury just moved into, and she's moving into the next sign, which is Leo. Now, Venus and Leo, Leo energy is very dramatic and expressive and creative and generous and, you know, usually happy, um, sometimes uh, very leadership oriented, also can have a tendency towards some control sometimes because they like to be seen, they like to be appreciated, they want to be recognized. So Venus here in our relationships, because again, that's what Venus rules. She's going to want to be recognized and appreciated for what she does. She doesn't mind being generous. She doesn't mind being loving, but she wants to have some sort of recognition and appreciation in return. When it comes to money and finances, this is a very creative placement. And Venus is considered a beneficial planetary energy. There's two benefics, as we call them in astrology. Jupiter is the greater one, again, the planet of blessings and expansion, but Venus is considered the lesser benefic. Again, still a very beneficial energy here where blessings can happen. So the fact that Venus moves into Leo on the day of the new moon in Gemini, I feel like that's a very, actually a very good day. I feel like there's going to be um, a lot of good feelings, a lot of positivity. There might be some blessings that are in store. Um, on Thursday and Friday, the 14th and the 15th, we do have a couple of mm, semi-challenging aspects going on. Thursday, Venus, which has just moved into Leo, is now challenging Uranus, which is newly in the sign of Taurus. It hasn't been there for very long, and Uranus is much more slow-moving than Venus is. So Venus is going to square Uranus. So what could that be? Uranus is freedom oriented and independent and it rules sudden and unexpected occurrences or surprises. Um, it's, you know, the rebel planet. So Venus challenging Uranus could be that there's um, something unexpected that happens in relationship matters because that's what Venus rules or in money matters especially too, because Venus does rule money and finances and Uranus is in Taurus and Taurus is a sign that rules money and finances. So there might be something unexpected that occurs within those realms of relationship and money. This could also be about um, relationships needing a little bit more space or a little bit more independence or freedom within the individuals involved in the relationship, whether that be again a romantic relationship or friendship relationship work relationship. Um, again, there just might be something that occurs to where we're needing a little bit more space here. Um, or again, there might be some unusual or unexpected thing that occurs um, in this realm. Friday, we have Mercury opposing Saturn. And as we mentioned um, earlier in this video, Mercury rules the mental realm. So thoughts, ideas, all forms of communication. Again, it's newly in the sign of cancer, which rules home, family, love, compassion, nurturing, caretaking, and it is opposite Saturn. And Saturn is a planet that sometimes rules delays or restriction or limitation, or it rules karma or karmic patterns or circumstances. Saturn also rules structure and form and manifestation and authority and you know, just kind of giving things a solid foundation. But with this particular aspect, we might be holding back something that we need to communicate or say um, because Mercury ruling that communication aspect. So this is playing out with other people. You know, it could be, again, it could be family matters because Mercury is in that sign of home and family, Cancer. So we might be holding back something as far as what we're saying to family members. But it could be, again, relationships with anybody. Or we might feel a little challenged or restricted with communicating something that we need to communicate in some way. Um, this might be a karmic lesson of ours within, you know, whatever relationship or situation this is happening because Saturn does rule karmic situations and circumstances. And he's, he's the great teacher. So he's here to teach us how to, you know, move through something. Um, you know, Saturn is also about patience. So moving through something, being patient with yourself, being patient with other people as you're moving through whatever challenges or restrictions or delays that Saturn kind of uh, imposes at times. 
Now, this is all that's happening astrologically this week, but I do want to make mention because on Monday, June 18th, which is going to be how we begin next week's reading, Neptune, which is the spiritual planet, but also rules confusion and illusion and sometimes deception, Neptune is going to be going stationary retrograde or in, into retrograde motion as of Monday, June 18th. And I want to mention it in this reading because Neptune is such a slow moving planet, we're going to start feeling this this week. So what will that mean? Neptune can make us feel spacey or floaty. It can make us more um, sensitive to drugs or alcohol or sugar or foods or other people's energy or energies, you know, in the environment of where we're working. Um, Neptune can actually be really good here as it's turning retrograde for meditation or all forms of spiritual practices. So if you're doing yoga or Tai Chi or you're doing ceremony or visualizations or intentions, uh, again, any form of meditation, it's going to be really good and supportive with that. It can also be very supportive with creative um, kind of endeavors, like hence the creative visualization aspect of it. But remember, too, that Neptune can rule that illusion, wearing rose-colored glasses, uh, feeling confused, or being deceived, either by people or circumstances. So that can actually uh, be an energy that's intensified as well as it's slowing down this week. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the messages from our angels here. The first card. Okay, the first card is the Queen of Water. This is uh, the Queen of Cups in the traditional tarot. Very loving, nurturing, compassionate, motherly kind of energy. And at the top it says tender-hearted, empathetic, patient, and loving. And at the bottom it says relationships develop to a new level. Trust your intuition. Care for yourself and others. And so we were talking about this with Mercury moving into the sign of Cancer, you know, and... Um, pretty soon here, we're also going to be having uh, the sun move into Cancer as well. It's not quite there yet because the new moon is in Gemini. But this is, again, uh, this. I feel like what this is saying is, is we're going to be, again, taking on this motherly role. This is the divine feminine energy at its best because, again, it wants to care for others. It wants to assist others. It wants to help others. It, it wants to be that mother energy. So again, I feel like in our communications and spirit is saying right now that this is not just with other people, but with ourselves as well, to be more loving, nurturing, compassionate, and caring towards ourselves as well as other people. But I feel like this is where we're beginning out the week with Mercury on Tuesday moving into that sign of cancer. So, you know, be sensitive to other people's feelings, understand where they're coming from, um, be, again, that shoulder to cry on, that listening ear, as the mother would. Um, I also feel like this is uh, for women in general, for the collective of, of women, to move into that divine feminine energy. It's, it's almost like I feel uh, like the Mother Mary energy coming in or the Quan Yin energy coming in. So this is a, an energy to embody as we begin our week. Let's go ahead and take a look at the next card. And you can see that there's two cards here in the middle. And that's because when I chose the second card, two cards came out. So we're going to look at both of them. This one first. Okay, this is the dreamer. This is Major Arcana Zero, the first of the Major Arcana. In the traditional tarot, it's called the Fool. So the dreamer here is with Archangel Metatron. And Archangel Metatron is, you know, one of two angels that actually lived an earthly life and so has more of an understanding of what it's like to live here on the third dimensional earth plane. You know, he's, again, you know, most of the archangels do not, have never had an earthly third dimensional life. And so a lot of times, you know, they, you know, they don't understand the whole thing about time and, and sometimes, you know, they're um, not really able to fully grasp what it's like to have to live through earthly challenges, whereas Archangel Metatron, again, living an earthly life, understands that. Um, so you can call upon him. He's really good with organization. He's really good with um, the 
the uh, children of the new paradigm, like the indigo crystal rainbow children. Um, and he's also very good at helping you to tap into your Akashic records, I have to say. If you want to tap into previous lifetimes or uh, karmic patterns in this life and having a better understanding, call upon Archangel Metatron. But the Fool is about new beginnings. And the message at the bottom says, a leap of faith, follow your dreams and unexpected opportunities. So I feel like this is associated with the new moon, the new moon in Gemini here. You know, the, the full card sometimes uh, takes a big leap of faith and, and makes a big jump without really thinking things through. But because the fool has trust and faith, or here the dreamer has trust and faith, it all works out well. And again, with the new moon in Gemini, that Gemini energy is very mutable, very changeable, and very, in, in some ways, a, a childlike. And with Venus also moving into Leo, as I said, I feel like this could be a very auspicious time or a very auspicious day anyway, as far as this new moon. So take that leap of faith. This is a time to, again, plant those new seeds, follow a new path, create a new beginning for yourself. And again, start with, you know, where it is as far as your thoughts and your beliefs and on, on the mind level. Again, very creative though. This could be about working on projects and starting something new as well. And as it says, there could be some unexpected opportunity that comes in. All right, so let's take a look at the next card that was with that one. Wow, this is a beautiful card as well. This is the Four of Fire in the traditional tarot, the Four of Wands. And to me, the number four is about giving it an aspect of stability. The number four is like a cube. It's like a box. It sits very solid and stable on the ground. And so there's a sense of stability here with this fire, whereas fire is usually not very stable. And fire is a creative spiritual energy. So here we're having more of a stability with our creative spiritual energy. The message at the bottom says, Commitment, peace, and abundance. Beautiful. That's that Venus going into Leo. Leo's a fire sign. And Venus is that benefic planet, that beneficial energy bringing blessings. So contentment, peace, and abundance. A happy home life, the successful completion of a project. Now, as I say that, they're saying not necessarily just completion either, although maybe you are finishing up some details and completing a project. But I feel like they're saying successful moving forward with a project, okay? So also look at this as successful moving forward of a project, but you are completing some tasks. You are completing parts of this that need to be done. Um, so again, this is a beautiful, beautiful card. Um, and I, again, feel this huge kind of creative energy. We have a lot of yellow here, solar plexus chakra, our sense of willpower, owning our power. Um, and there's a lot here with, um, there's even some orange energy in there, which is the sacral chakra and creative self-expression. And that's part of that Venus going into Leo as well. As I said, Leo is about creative self-expression, um, you know, being creative in some way. So, so far we are looking to have a wonderful week. Let's see what the last card is. Okay, the last card is the Seven of Air, and this is the Seven of Swords in the traditional tarot. Now, the sword suit, which is the suit of the mind, our thoughts, how we communicate, uh, just like uh, towards the end of the week on Friday, we mentioned Mercury, the planet of the mind and thoughts and communications is opposing Saturn, which is a little bit maybe of a challenge. And the suit of air or the suit of swords can bring in some challenges because we're dealing with, again with the mind and the mind sometimes can play tricks on us and you know this is our ego coming in to kind of fill us with fears or doubts or anxieties so this is why it's so important to meditate and especially with neptune starting to slow down this week to get ready to turn retrograde as of Monday of next week. Again, there can be some confusion. The number seven numerologically speaks of sometimes confusion or not having all the puzzle pieces yet, not seeing things clearly. And there's a great need with the number seven to kind of go within and connect with your inner teacher, or connect with your higher self, seek the answers within yourself through meditation, quiet self-reflection is what the number seven is. So here again, we're, we're seeking that solitude, if you will, within our own mind, the air suit, 
The message at the bottom says, plans that need revision, more going on than meets the eye, poor timing. So, you know, it stands out to me, more going on than meets the, than meets the eye. Again, Neptune can sometimes bring in confusing circumstances or situations or interactions. And always understand that there's more going on in the spiritual plane than sometimes we're aware of. So when things seem confusing, again, we're missing something. We're missing some sort of puzzle pieces and that will be made clear to us a little bit later on. You know, maybe not right away. But again, don't allow yourself to go into fear mode or anxiety mode with this. Um, also, communications can be a little bit challenging, I feel. Um, with this. So again, if you're communicating something very important to another person, make sure you're reiterating what is said to you to make sure that you hear them clearly. And also you as well, when you're speaking to somebody and you're trying to get across a very important point, you know, say it again or, or change how you say it and make sure, you know, and ask them, do you understand what I'm trying to say? Make sure everything is very clear here. Again, the timing thing. Uh, poor timing. You know, Neptune again can give us that floaty, confused, not really grounded kind of feeling. And sometimes it is about um, what appears to be poor timing. But again, it's an illusion because everything is exactly done when it's supposed to be done. Everything unfolds exactly when it is meant to. So if something doesn't seem to be moving or uh, unfolding the way that you had planned, again, know that there's a spiritual reason behind it and that universal time is not always what we desire in earthly time. And lastly, that first sentence, plans needing revision, you know, again, reworking things, you know, Mercury, planet of the mind, opposing Saturn, Neptune slowing down this week, there may be something here to where we're needing to uh, redo something, um, uh, you know, do something over again. Uh, the, you know, what pops into my mind as soon as I say that is, is something as simple as computer issues. So be prepared that there might be some odd kind of uh, computer things going on. Odd because, again, Neptune is slowing down, but also with Venus challenging Uranus. Uranus does rule electronics, so there may be things happening there as well. But overall, we have a really good week. Just don't get caught up in the negative, confusing, you know, ego mind stuff. Don't get caught up in the fear. Know that everything here looks really beneficial and beautiful, especially with that new moon in Gemini. So let's go ahead and take a look at our special message card, depending on our stone of choice. I think we're running out of time, so we got to hurry here. So for those of you that chose the Moonstone, let's give this a little shuffle. Moonstone people, this one here is sticking up. Athena, it's safe for you to be powerful. You know how to be powerful in a loving uh, way that benefits others as well as yourself. That to me is the Queen of Water. You know, the Queen of Water is very loving, but she's the queen. So she's, you know, very powerful, but in a loving, nurturing way. So there might be some situation or circumstance where you really need to own your power. You really need to speak your truth. You need to stand in what feels right to you. Do what feels right to you. Now, this is both for yourself as well as perhaps for other people, family members, you know, people you work with, perhaps friends. But this is something where, again, power, they want you to know, your angels and guides want you to know the power is not a bad thing. It's not a negative thing. Spiritual power and owning your spiritual power is a very, very good thing. All right. For those of you that chose the Ocean Jasper, okay, this one's sticking up, Ocean Jasper people. Azure, okay, it reminds me of Azurite, the stone called Azurite with that dark blue color. It says, your desired outcome will occur in the very near future. Have patience and faith and don't try to force it to happen. So again, it's kind of a go with the flow kind of energy here. Divine timing is at play here. No need to force or push things faster than they seem to want to be unfolding, okay? And again, trust and have faith. Everything is moving in the right direction for you. And what it is that you're desiring, whatever outcome that you're looking for, and maybe it's an outcome with this new moon energy. Maybe it's new seeds that you're planting as of the new moon. It's going to come to fruition. So just kind of, again, go with the flow this week, especially 
with that Neptunian energy that's starting to happen. Um, and it looks like you're getting ready to soar. You're getting ready to, you know, move to the next level of where it is that you want to go. Okay. And then for those of you that chose that Morganite stone, let's take a look here. And give it a shuffle until something stands out. Morganite, people. Morganite. Okay, you know what? I keep I'm backing up because I keep on looking at this card here. So we're going to pull that. This is Xana. And it says, you are protected from all types of harm. The worst is now behind you. I ask you to relax and feel safe. So I feel like you've been going through something, going through something that maybe has been challenging, a situation, a circumstance, maybe a relationship dynamic. And your angels and guides want you to know that, again, you are being led in the right direction. You're being assisted. You're being protected um, from any kind of further challenges. Um, now, as I say that, they're saying, well, there, you know, there still may be some things you need to go through that might be considered challenging, but know again that you're being uh, protected. You're surrounded by this beautiful white light of your angels and guides. Um, they're showing me heart chakra energy. So I feel like if you stay in your heart chakra, you know, meditate um, and open your heart chakra or balance your heart chakra. This has a, some green energy in it, and the heart chakra is related to the color green. So I feel like wearing green clothes, eating green foods, that will help to kind of assist that heart chakra energy and staying balanced and open. And most importantly, visualize this beautiful ball of green light at the heart chakra. And as I say that, Archangel Raphael is coming in with his emerald green light, so call him in as well to help to heal whatever situation, circumstance has been going on for you that has seemed challenging. All right, so I hope everyone's liked this weekly angel card reading. Thank you so much, everyone, for all of your love, your support. Um, I send all that love and light back to you, and I'm sending you all many, many angel blessings.